Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2018 Beaver State Fling PDGA National Tour event presented by Keen. Terry Miller, the disc golf guy here, joined by Dynamic Disc own Robert McCall. Robert, West Course, front nine, third card. You ready for this? I don't know if I am ready for this, but we're rolling, so I better get ready. You better. Well, I hope you packed your rain gear. As you can see, there's a little bit of action. Ricky Waisaki enjoying himself nonetheless during a backup. Beaver State Fling, one of the favorite tour stops of the year, and some beautiful courses. Let's take a look at this third card at this PDGA National Tour. It's stacked. Yeah, I mean, Bradley Williams out of Austin, Texas, fantastic player. Nate Doss from around the Oregon area. Then we got Josh Anthon, obviously out of California, and Ricky Wysocki. Some big names here. Hole number one starts off with a par four, 630 feet, and you're playing to a landing zone here because there's OB on this left side. So we see our competitors trying to just hang it a little bit out to the right. Looks like Nate's let it go a bit left of where he wanted, but not too bad. And a few of them finding that left side uh, post or tree, I should say. I was thinking the left side uprights. <laughs> uh, some people call them trees, but post works for today as well. <laughs> well, and I was trying to make a reference in, a, in terms of a field goal post. Hey, that's all right. That's all right. So, so Josh pulled his a little bit left, but it looks like he's still going to have uh, a really, really long straight shot if he wanted to attack it. He's just going to play smart and lay up to the right side. I think that's a good play. It's a great play. Unfortunately, poorly executed. Josh turning that over, just trying to avoid the OB road on the left. And you'll see he's on that right side, and he's not going to have much of a look from there. You see Nate Doss just lay up into the open, and Bradley Williams going straight across, but... That's pretty low, and it looks like it's probably caught that curb and stayed out of bounds. That's an unfortunate break for him. Tough way to start the round. It is, and Nate Dawes has a similar shot, and he's curbed. Oh, that's got to hurt. Yeah, you can tell the ceiling is really uh, affecting those players' ability to throw the line they want to. Ricky Wysocki cares nothing about any ceilings. No, and he's got that little forehand, and even if he had that low, assuming he doesn't hit the curb, he could have got a skip off the road. So that's a really great play by Waisaki. And Anthon was really, really considering all his options there. And look at that. He says, eh, I'm Another not going to mess up. with it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's just taking your medicine, honestly. And that seemed like a good play from where he was sitting. Nate Doss is, I'm sure, frustrated, as is Bradley, about – biting off a little too much and throwing their uh, their first shot low. And so these will likely end up close to the basket, give them their shot at bogey five before they move on. And Anthon with a oh. long-looking run there. Yeah, very impressive as he's thrown his forehand. None of these guys really off to a great start here to get things going. Yeah, Ricky's in a decent spot, uh, you know, and the sky is blue and Josh Anthon's making putts like it's not a big deal. Um but yeah, I mean, Ricky's thrown a great approach shot, but our other guys, yeah, a little bit, little bit slow. Not exactly what they want to be doing here. Um, yeah, you're not going to want to start with a bogey anytime. No, and so they struggle a little bit on hole one. This is Saturday afternoon. They Ooh. played two rounds on Friday. They played a morning shotgun round and then an afternoon shotgun round. And now we're out here on Saturday afternoon for a tea time start. It's about 12.10 p.m. in the afternoon. This is another two-shot hole, correct? It is, and, and really, I'll say this for a right-handed backhand thrower, you're just throwing a hyzer. I mean, it's almost tough to screw this one up. You could throw it maybe a little too far. Even that hitting the tree is still going to put him in a pretty good position. But you're looking for about a 325 to 375 foot just power hyzer. Just don't. Don't come up short. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's what it looks like. And if you cut the corner uh, and get a little bit more distance to the left, that really just gives you a shorter second shot, but not so much of an advantage that it seems our competitors have to do that. It's just get to the landing zone. Exactly. So all three, all four of them, just the hyzer, and then Bradley Williams is a little shorter. He's good 75 feet shorter than the rest, but he still has a look at this. This is probably 350 to 375 feet. Uh, and you can be aggressive because there's a backstop. 
Yeah, that's that's one of the greens that as a player you love to see because you can just juice whatever disc you want, and it, it looks like you're not going to be farther than you know 25 or 30 feet past the basket. That's a that's a great confidence booster. So even if you do end up short, you can just throw something hard. And I love the play by both Doss and Anthon there, both putting themselves in position for the birdie. And Waisaki's got a standstill flick. And it looks like that's just uh, leaking a little bit to the right. No out of bounds over there, correct? There is none over there. Uh, it just, you might be obstructed. And what a run by Williams. Yeah, Bradley's got that low line putt dialed in pretty well. I've seen him make those from all over the place. So a little surprised to not see that one go in, but... I'm definitely surprised to not see that one go in. Even if you that, do... Yeah, even though that's not Ricky's standard putting style, he just makes putts a lot. Yeah, and that's exactly what I was going to say. He, You saw him switch it up from more of his swinging putters, his push putt like you're seeing there, as opposed to uh, he really had to give that a spin putt due to the low ceiling. So he's going to have to settle for a par there. That's going to feel good for Doss after starting with a – Tough double bogey on hole one. Nice to get a birdie on hole two. Get a little bit back on track. And Williams will tap in and uh, shout out Andrew Rich for a number of the amazing signs and the wood carvings and engravings and uh, laser etchings that we see out on the course like that one. Great job, Andrew Rich. So Anthon and Doss both had birdied on hole number two. And this is a really tight fairway. <laughs> That's not the tree you want to hit. I haven't <laughs> had the privilege of playing these courses before, but I'm just going to tell you right now, you don't want to hit that one. Uh, first available, as I think some would say. Yeah. Uh, really, the play here, you'll see a lot of these, whether it's a, a high forehand or it's a, a high turnover backhand, the play is up and high and trying to get it to fade back to that right-hand side. And that looks a little tight by Ricky, and he catches an inside tree. Yeah, it seems like if you could get a forehand high enough, that would be nice, but the backhand Anheuser looks to be the shot that could get all the way there if you can just peer the gap. And you know you're challenged when you see a now a forehand roller here as the approach shot by Anthon, and that also catches a tree. I squared that up, otherwise it was on a pretty decent cut angle headed toward the basket. Bradley Williams throwing a Nova on his approach and just one of the smoothest throwers in the game. Uh, I learned a lot from playing with him and no surprise to see him throw some good up shots like that. And th this hole is one of those kind of take it or leave it holes. Nobody walks up to this and says, this is a guaranteed birdie, even though it's one of the shorter holes out here. Uh, right. As you can see, if you don't get through clean off the tee, you may be fighting just to save a par and, and Anthon's now, you know, at this point looking at a bogey. This is Ricky for a long par save. Yeah, like you said, I don't see a bunch of guys walking up and thinking two, but they're also not really thinking four. It's like throw your shot uh, wherever it hits. You ought to be able to scramble and get a three unless you hit very, very early like Josh did. Somewhat surprising to see no birdies. Uh, you Usually you see everything from twos to fours on uh, hole number <laughs> three, and this time it doesn't give up any birdies. Uh, they all are looking forward to the short and easy hole four that's on deck. A bit of a slow start for these guys, but lots of golf left. Um, plenty of birdie opportunities here. And I'm going to say hole four is uh, my dream disc golf hole. I could be a world champion someday if, if I just got to play hole four over <laughs> and you, over and over again. All you got to do is throw it straight 175 and you're there, man. I like this hole. It's just a, 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 in a place like this where it seems like every shot is demanding. Here's one where you can just throw a straight putter. I mean, you could if you get loose with it, you could hit one of those trees and be extremely frustrated, but almost every one of our top players oh goodness oh wow <laughs> nice shot by josh almost every one of our top players should be basically counting this as a two and a little high oh. and tight for waisaki there i'm not talking about the haircut i'm yeah, talking elevator about elevator down 
<laughs> going down for Waisaki. Uh, this comes in as the third easiest hole on the course, uh, wow. playing 0.47 below par. And I think these guys are going to push that average even lower. I can't wait to see the other two easier holes. This <laughs> I, I would assume this would be the easiest hole to par on the course, unless the other two are kind of uh, soft par fours, you might say. Uh, and that's exactly what I think we might see later on in the round. But you're seeing three guys that are in. Bradley Williams uh, inside 10 feet or so. And he's looking to complete the star frame and does just that. So that's on track. That, that's what we expect from our third card in MPO. And now that's the hole that Paige Pierce aced a couple of years back. Is that correct? That went on SportsCenter? Um, I don't believe so. Okay. Um, uh, maybe I'm thinking of a different one. Yeah, she she had aced at Ledgestone a few years ago. That was uh, that's of a I'm similar of. nature. Yeah, and, that's uh, what I'm thinking of. Paul McBeth aced hole four at the other course, um, <laughs> which also is kind of similar in nature. Gotcha. So this is a really interesting hole because you're up here. You're still at this elevated area that we just saw from the previous two holes. And you have a low ceiling. And these guys are really getting creative with the backhand rollers. And there's really no great way to cover this one with just one camera. Uh, but the hole pushes out another, as it says, 420 feet. And then it has a low ceiling on, a, on an elevated yet protected green. So okay. driving it all the way to the pin, unless you're within 30 feet, you're still going to have a low ceiling for a putt. It's it's a very difficult shot. All right. So as you can see, our competitors are throwing angles that normally would be pretty bad for a full distance roller, but they're kind of trying to play for a cut uh, out of the box that just actually finishes to the left. Um, so, so really, yeah, like you said, a really interesting... Uh, shape of the hole, some creative shots from our competitors, but more than likely it looks like we'll see a whole bunch of threes here. And Anthon uh, almost able to, and like I was saying, look at these low-hanging branches and the, the trees that are in your way of protecting that green. Uh, even when you do get close, and that's about as close as you'll see what you just saw from Williams, uh, you still have obstruction. <laughs> yeah, that's a really tough and frustrating spot to land when you've thrown a clear and away better drive than everybody else and still can't convert just because it's a tough spot. And you said that we'll likely see a bunch of pars. Well, this hole averaged 3.04. So yeah. almost <laughs> exactly to par. Uh, it's right in the middle of the course in terms of the most difficult. Uh, it's, it, it's a pretty much a three. Uh, you could easily take a four. And if you, if you somehow got a two, uh, you did some things very well. <laughs> right. Or got very lucky. It's probably one of those two. So you see everybody followed up, and now we're on hole six. And this, you have to say it, this is famously known as the Philo hole. Yeah, the Albatross. Exactly. To me. So here on hole six, you're just similar somewhat to hole two. You're just trying to throw a really big, long, powerful shot that has a little bit of a hyzer fade, not quite as much angle as hole two, but you just really want to throw something hard and put it out there and put it in play, put it in the middle of the fairway. And then once you're out there, it looks like your, your second shot, you know, we saw Philo get really aggressive and throw a flex around the trees, but most everybody else is going to be, if they're not playing for eagle, they're just going to play a little bit more over to the right side so that they have an open approach to the basket. Is that correct? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, as you'll see on these approach shots, there's you're, you're throwing it slightly up and over a hillside, and then you really need it to bend from left to right and then fight back. So here's Nate. He just didn't turn that over enough. Yeah, that's a little early. And he's going to be struggling from that left side of the fairway, uh, or, or really, I should say, the shul. Is it pretty much jail uh, in between the players and the basket if they don't get far enough to the right? Um, you, you, you'll see Nate, Nate, uh, I think finds a way to get creative, but you'd rather miss, I think to the right here than to the left. And, and you see Anthon really trying to turn that over. And I love the angle there. That's beautifully executed. Wow. It was. And, and I'll say if you had another camera down there watching, that's not far off from exactly what we saw from Philo. So, uh, wow. so Ricky's playing very conservative there. That's not Something that you put together for Ricky a lot, but uh, he just plays out to the right to secure his birdie. And you see <laughs> Doss couldn't quite get all the way out. That was really the best mm -hmm. angle he had. He really uh, went back and forth with a few different options, and that was the best that he had. And 
and Ricky's able just to slide it up next to the pin from that right hand side. That might have been a bit of a misfire from Ricky on the second shot. I'm, uh, that's probably a little farther right than he wanted to be. Great scramble for a birdie by Nate Doss there. And one of the things I love here, uh, and, and take this to your home course and beyond, uh, rather than painting fresh circles, which are timely and expensive and, and really challenging and not fun to do, uh, they just have a 10-meter string attached to the base of every single basket. So if you wanted to confirm, which we just saw from Anthon, uh, that's one way to know if you're inside or outside the circle. Yeah, I like that a lot. I think that's the way to go. Um, we don't see Anthon miss th from that distance very often. <laughs> we don't. That was that was pretty interesting. <laughs> I saw you were at a loss for words there for a moment. I, I, I just thought, you know, once he stretched the string out and dropped it before he got to his disc, I was like, well, this is a guarantee. Hmm. Now, would That's it be right. a, a mean trick to go out and, and cut all those strings like four feet short the night before? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I think that would be a mean trick. It really would be. I'm such People a probably wouldn't appreciate it much. No, they would not. <laughs> so I don't I don't recommend that to anyone. But Do you have the scoring average on this, on this hole? I, I do. Again, um, that was hole number six, and that comes in as the single easiest hole on the course. That's what I was thinking, yeah. Yeah, it, you know, some would say as a soft par five. Uh, it, it came in at 0.83 under par. So yeah. that, that is ultimately the single easiest hole on the course relative to par. Right. Well, you saw Nate Doss throw a pretty poor second shot to his standards and then still able to get a birdie with a, with a decent scramble and a good putt. So not surprised to see that be the easiest hole relative to par on the course. And this hole is, it's a great par four. You know, the, the spotters, the amazing volunteers and staff that are out there, they're all standing right in the OB road area. And you're looking to do what you've seen from these three guys so far is just throw it out, let it finish, but it cannot skip hard or too far left because you're going to find yourself OB in the parking lot on the left side. I see. So and this is a great play from Anton. That was perfect. That was yeah. pretty much perfect. And all they've really got to work with on their second shot is just a low ceiling, correct? That's exactly yeah. it. You're splitting those trees. trees. Yep, you're splitting the trees. A little bit of a low ceiling. Uh, but as you can see, this should be a routine approach shot for any professional. Right. Yeah, two expertly executed shots so far. See if we can make it three for three here with Doss. And if you go back and you watch the bonus coverage, thanks to DD over uh, from the women's rounds, when Paige Pierce played this hole, I think she outdrove every competitor on the men's side here as well. <laughs> it was... It was amazing how far she threw it. I'm honestly not surprised by that. Like, uh, I watched, you know, I, I had watched Paige throw on video before, and then uh, she came over to be sponsored by Dynamic Discs. And so since then, we've played several rounds together. And I always thought, like, okay, she throws far, but you know, I throw, I throw kind of far. I play men's pro open, and she outdrives me almost every time we play. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 and not that that's a huge feat, but she just throws really far. She's pretty incredible. It's certainly well. Uh, I, sometimes when the people on the internet said, oh, she outthrows me, I always think, well, you know, you're maybe not that good. But Robert, like yourself, you're a solid player. And when she's out driving some of our top men, uh, it's, yeah. it's been more impressive. She's, she's got plenty of power. There's, there's no doubt about that. And no surprise to see a star frame there. Um, as long as you get your drive in bounds, it looks like that's a relatively routine upshot for these guys. And here we are on hole eight, 485 feet. And, and maybe, Robert, you would have arrived at this, but I'll spoil it. This comes in as the single hardest hole relative to I was to about par. to say it. <laughs> I was about to say that, yeah. Um, it plays 0.38 over par, and that's essentially because almost no one's going to birdie this. Right. It's a, it's a big-time tweener, right? You can't really call it a par four because that would be really, really soft. And people can, people can reach it if they if they hit a disc right. It's not the distance that's the problem. It's navigating the uh, the trees and the low ceiling. And then is there road in between them and the basket as well, that's or exactly is it just up it. on the mountain? Yep. No, you see the parking lot to the left, which Ricky's going to flirt with oh. and stay in bounds. You'll see him in a second. Okay. He barely stays in bounds. But there is a road between that mound, which you can now see, and, and where they're throwing. So... At best, you're trying to throw as close to that road, and maybe you're going to get aggressive. But if you if you get a roll away off your approach, you could easily roll B on your second shot. Right. 
Well, and this is how you know it's a green that you shouldn't run when even Josh Anton lays up. <laughs> With the most nonchalant forehand maybe we've ever seen. Right. This is like the big brother to, I, I believe it's a hole on the other course that's 400 feet, little little OB uh, island. Yep, hole uh, 10. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of like that, except for a much less attainable drive. So you're happy with three. Uh, you know, you'd obviously take two, but you don't really want a four. Well, and here's Ricky for a little bit of work left, and eh, no big deal. Uh, he didn't care about work. And uh, if you're watching at home and you haven't played a lot of tournament disc golf or disc golf with, uh, with any sort of elevation or hills, having your feet uh, on different planes makes your putt quite a bit more difficult. And Ricky just handled that, you know, like a professional. He's, If he's not the best putter in the world, he's top three, you know. Uh, they make that look easy, but putts like those are anything but, in my opinion. Uh, a great point and something certainly worth noting there. As, as we're also noting, here come the umbrellas. It's gorgeous, sunny, and beautiful. And uh, eight holes later, we've officially busted out the umbrellas and uh, busting out a bunch of pars there. Yeah, it's like the Pacific Northwest is known for this sort of thing. Here at Dynamic Discs, we want to help run your local tournament, just like we've supported and sponsored hundreds of others around the world. We've got everything covered from custom stamp discs and players packs to CTPs and trophies. We have what it takes to help every player from novice to pro have a good time. It all starts with ordering from our website with discounted bulk pricing. We can take care of designing and stamping your custom disc. We'll even include rewards when your custom stamped order reaches a new tier. We have discounted prices on extras for players' packs, CTPs, raffles, or any other side event. One of the best ways to get new people to your event is custom stamped apparel. When people see your tournament represented on the course, they won't want to miss the next one. We have Dimax trophy discs available, and we can even get any of our baskets custom wrapped. The newest addition to our sponsorship package is the Grow Disc Golf 5K 10K Ace Challenge. Each participant will have one chance at acing a hole, and their ace could be worth $10,000. If you're looking for an easy way to do payout, we can partner up for that too. TDs can avoid the hassle of payout and take advantage of our huge inventory by sending payout through dynamicdisc.com for a discounted price. We want to see your event grow and we'll work with you to make your event the best it can be. So whether you're running a small C tier or looking for the next GBO, check out dynamicdisc.com or email sponsorship at dynamicdisc.com for everything you need. And great explanation by Danny, and of course, all of this bonus footage brought to you in part by Dynamic Disc. Thank you so much, Robert and Bobby and Eric and Denise, who did the previous commentary. Uh, it, it's just so um, amazing how you guys support disc golf as we watch awesome. Nate Thanks, Doss. Man. Yeah, no problem. And Nate, you know, clipping that tree as he was just trying to play the hyzer, and and Ricky will tell you that was junk. He's, he wasn't I was going to say, that. that didn't look like that's <laughs> where you want to go. This this one plays long and around to the right, right? You want to hang the left side and then uh, give yourself an upshot. That's just, I don't mean, kind of straightforward and finishing to the right, correct? Yeah, and you saw Bradley Williams execute exactly where you want to be, where you want this uh, to finish. And Josh Anthon is going to put uh, a little mustard on that one, and I like yeah. that shot as well. He's that's again, a smash. He's out driving the entire group right there. All right, yeah, you don't have uh, short throwers on this uh, on this card either. That's that's an impressive drive by Anth on there, and that has to be some moisture under the thumb. Oh man, that's uh, that's not what you want. Uh, I've been watching Nate Doss play for about thirteen or fifteen years now, and uh, that that may unfortunately may be the worst shot I've ever seen him throw, and and it is only ex uh, explainable, like you said, by maybe some kind of moisture or or grip or, or just some kind of weird, uh, yeah, something. Yeah, that was strange. Now, in the meantime, we saw Ricky really uh, not concerned at all about his bad lie and just throwing a forehand around the corner to a pretty good spot. Same with Bradley, and then this is Nate Doss to follow. That's a little bit more what you would expect from Doss on a uh, routine forehand. Yeah, honestly, that, that really did. I'm not even making excuses for anybody. That looked like some, some moisture underneath his thumb or something like that. You don't see that sort of shot from Nate really ever. And after Anton had the biggest drive in the group, he has a not-so-great approach, and before that even wow. gets to the basket. Yeah, that's ugh. You see the wind pick up, but yet the rain is gone. And we just teed off a few minutes ago. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah, it's quite quite the turn of events here for these guys, but uh, it seems like they're handling it in stride. That's a really good putt for Bradley there. Uh, 
from his perspective, left to right crosswind, when he's got a little bit of hyzer on that putter, uh, it's hard to control the height really how you want to, and he just made it look easy. So well done. Great birdie for Rick, especially after being out of position. It was as Ricky throws that one just a bit high, but it drags it in, and Doss will wake, walk away with the par, and we're going to move over to hole 10 uh, on the back half. Robert, thank you for joining me. Thank you to the PDGA, along with Dynamic Dis for helping with the bonus coverage. It's been great having you. Josh Josh is going to get things dialed in, I think, for that back nine. All right, everyone, we appreciate it. Again, this has been the Disc Golf Guys coverage of the 2018 Beaver State Fling Round 3 Chase Card of the Chase Card. We'll see you in the back nine.